Today we start with the chapter Babu Mashi Al Al Khufain or Babu Mashi Al Khufain, the chapter pertaining to wiping upon the socks and that which is similar to that, and that which is similar to the socks. Al Mash, Lughatan, Mash in the language is Al Imrar, Imrar Al Yad Al Ashay. Is to move your hand over something, okay? Imrar, to move your hand over something. And khuf, huwa satrun al ka'bain fa akthar min jild wa nahwihi. The khuf, khufain, is that which covers the feet made from skin, okay? Made from skin, from jild, normally leather, and that which is similar, similar to it. Shar'an, and the technical definition, is that ta'abudu lillahi bi imral al yad. Technically, it is to pass your wet hand, okay, over the uh, sock or that which is similar to the sock, over the over the khufain or that which is similar to the khufain. And we said the khufain is made from jild, it's made from skin, okay, leather. In Bukhari and Muslim, we have the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, narrated by Mughira ibn Shu'bah. Who said, Kuntu ma Nabi sallallahu alayhi sallam fatawadda'a. I was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam and he made wudu. Fahwaitu li anzi a khafayhi faqal da'huma fa inni adhaltuhuma tahiratain fa masaha alayhima. He said, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam was making wudu, I went to go, I went down to try to remove his socks. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam said, da'huma, leave them. For verily, I have put them on in a state of tahara. Okay, whilst being in a state of purification, and then the Prophet ﷺ wiped over them. So this is a proof that wiping of the socks is something which is mashru', something which is legislated. Okay, and Imam Ibn Mundir, rahimullah ta'ala, in his book al ijma he said that there is consensus that you can wipe on the socks. There is consensus that you can wipe on the socks. And the Hanabila scholars, the Hanbali scholars, they say it's better for you to wipe than to wash. If you had the choice, should I wipe on my sock or should I take my sock off and wash my feet? They said it's better for you to wipe than to wash. Because Imams Nisa'i and Tirmidhi, they collect the hadith of Safwan ibn Asal, radiyallahu anhu, who said, Kana an Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya'muruna idha kunna safran alla nanzi'a khifafana thalathata ayyam wa layal yahidna illa min janabatin wa lakin min ghaitin wa bawlin wa nawm. He said the Prophet ﷺ would command us that if we were traveling, not to remove our socks for three days and three nights. Not to remove them. It was an order from the Prophet ﷺ. Except for in the state of Janaba. If we were in a state of Janaba, we had to remove them. But in the state of breaking our wudu, for having visited the bathroom or falling asleep, then no. Okay, it was, we would wipe instead. So what is the wajh of from the hadith? That it's better to, wash, it's better to wipe than wash. What is the evidence from the hadith supporting the oath, supporting the statement of the Hanbali scholars that it's better to wipe than wash? Exactly. So the command of the Prophet ﷺ here was to wipe, right? So herein, obviously, it's understood that wiping is better than washing. The author, he says, it's permitted to wipe for a day and night for the one who is resident, meaning 24 hours. And for the traveler, it's permitted to wipe for three nights, for three days and three nights. Right? It's permitted for three days and three nights. The author, he, he used the word yajus, permitted. Okay? Why? Because there is a group who claim to be or who are ascribed to the Ummah of Islam that do not see it legislated to wipe upon the socks. And they are the Shia, especially the Rafidah amongst them, and the Khawarij, okay? These groups, they said that it's not legislated to wipe upon your socks. Therefore, the ulama, they would make an extra emphasis when it came to wiping on the socks. In fact, they would go as far as putting it in their books of Aqidah, in the books of belief. Though it's a fiqh issue, they would put it in the books of belief to show that this is something which Ahlul Sunnah differs from with the people of Ahlul Bidah, the people of innovation, right? So the Imam, therefore, he says it's Yajus. That's why he used the word Yajus, that it's legislated and it's permitted. 
and also the Imam, he mentioned for you the timing, right? Why did he mention for you the timing? Apart from this being proven by the Sunnah, you have from the you have those from Ahlul Sunnah, those who are people of Sunnah, that had the opinion that the wiping doesn't have timing, that the wiping you can do it as much as you want. For example, Imam Malik. This is Imam Malik's famous opinion that you can wipe without uh, limit, okay, above and beyond three days or above and beyond a day and a night if you are a resident. In Sahih Muslim, in Sahih Muslim, Ali radiyallahu anhu he said, جعل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاثة أيام ولياليهن للمسافر ويوما وليلة للمقيم. That the timing, as mentioned by Ali radiyallahu anhu in Sahih Muslim. That the Prophet ﷺ made the wiping for the traveler three days and it's nights for the traveler and the one who is resident a day and a night. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah ta'ala, he says in extreme situations, in extreme situations like the weather is extremely cold for example, or you are in a situation of jihad where you are defending the lands of the Muslims and you don't have time to think about removing your socks etc. In these situations, the period of wiping can be extended for you. You do not have to take off your socks after three days and three nights or after a day and a night if you are in a difficult situation. Why? Because Adurat Tubihu Al Mahdurat. Okay, that which is um, that which is forbidden for you due to necessity, that forbiddance is foregone. Okay, due to necessity, that forbiddance is foregone. And also pertaining to this part of the discussion with regards to the wiping of the socks, we mentioned that the traveller can wipe for how long? Three days and three nights. But there is a category of travellers that cannot do the wiping. It is those travellers who travel with the intention of ma'asi. They travel with the intention of sinning. Okay, because the ulama they said al rukhas la tunat bil ma'asi. That the ruksa, the um, what's the, how would you translate ruksa? The concession, the concession is not given, or is not founded due to sinfulness or because of sinfulness, right? Why? Because if you were to give a concession to somebody whose intention to get that concession is based upon sin, it's as though you are affirming his sin, as though you are legislating for him, validating his his uh, reason or ability to sin. And therefore the ulama, they say that if a person is traveling with the intention to sin, then he is not allowed to take the rukhsa of wiping for three days and three nights. And three nights. Or one day and one night if he's not a traveler. The author, he said, min hadathin ba'da lubs. So when does the time start for either the resident or the traveler? According to the author and those who agree with him in the madhab, they say from the time of the hadith, after he has worn the sock. What is hadith? As we said, it is that you break your wudu, okay? Or you do something which requires you to make ghusl, okay? So in this situation, that is when the time period starts for you to wipe your socks. So let's say, for example, you put your socks on at 12 p.m. And then at 3 p.m., you broke your wudu. So when do you have to wipe the next time? When do you have to take your socks off and redo the wudu? You have to do it the next day at 3 p.m., okay? After 24 hours. Tayyib? And the illa for this, the reasoning for this, the ulama they say, is because what is the reason for you to be wiping? The reason for you to be wiping is the fact that you have now broken your wudu. That is the suburb. So the timing of this, uh, which you are allowed to wipe, has to start from the suburb, which is that you broke your wudu. So whenever the wudu is broken, that is the time at which your timing will start. Okay? Another opinion in the madhab, they say, no, it's not from when you have broken your wudu. It's not from the hadith. Rather, it's from the timing of the wiping, from the mas'h. And this is held by Shaykh Sa'di and Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala, as well as others. Okay? Because it comes in some narrations of the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ used the word mas'h. Okay? So mas'h is from when the timing starts. So in this situation, if you were to wear your socks at 12, okay? And you broke your wudu at four, but you didn't wipe until five. So comparing that to the previous situation, you get extra time. Because according to the author and the standard opinion in the madhab, when does your timing start? Hadith. But according to the other opinion, it starts 
from the wiping whenever you wipe, which gives you extra time. And this opinion may be more in line with the, the correct understanding. Why? Because the whole point of the rukhsa, of rukhas, is to give you ease. So the more ease you are given, the more in line it is with the understanding of rukhsa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The Imam, he says, he gives now some conditions as to what type of sock can be wiped on. He says, ala tahirin, upon that which is pure, mubah, permissible, satir lil mafrud, covering the obligatory part of the foot which needs to be washed. Yathbutu bi nafsihi, and it stays up by itself. So he mentions these four things. The first of them, he says that it has to be tahir. What he's referring to here is what? Is it uh, that it has to be tahir ainiya or tahir hukmiyan? Remember these terms that we took before? Tahir ainiya is that the essence of the material itself is pure. This is what he's referring to. That it has to be pure and not from made from something which is najis. However, if your socks are pure in material, in essence, yet they have najasatul hukmiya or najasatul ta'ira comes upon it. What did we say that was? That was like, for example, if you have a carpet which is pure, but then a child urinated on the carpet. Now, this is a najasatul al hukmiya. This is the najasa which is not, in essence, part of that material. So it can be removed. Right? So if you have a sock which is pure, but you have, for example, a drop of urine, urine on it, azakumullah, then in this situation, you can still wipe on the sock. Okay? You can wipe on the sock, but you cannot pray in it. You can wipe on the sock, and your hadith has been lifted. So you can do all acts of worship, except for praying. When it comes to the salah, you have to ensure that the sock itself is pure from both types, in, in both ways. Okay, not tahara ainiya only, but also a tahara atar atara atar al al hukmiya. Okay, so in both types it has to be pure. So I repeat that quickly. The imam, what he's referring to, he's referring to that the essence of the material has to be pure. But the ulama, ulama, they say if there's a najas al hukmiya, if there's a najas, like for example, you have a drop of urine falls upon the sock. In this situation, you can still wipe upon the sock. Because the essence of the material is that it's pure, right? And you can consider yourself as now being having lifted hadith and you can go ahead and do all the acts of worship except for salah. Because in the salah, like we said previously in the previous lesson, you cannot carry najasa, right? So if the sock, it's pure but it has najasa which has dropped upon it, it has to be washed. That najasa has to be washed off. Tayyib. So the imam, he also said mubah. It has to be mubah in the sense that it has to be permissible. What do I mean by permissible? Not stolen, okay? It has to be not stolen. Whereas if it was stolen, again, a rukhas is not given in ma'asi, okay? The concession is not given to that which is done sinfully. And also the Imam, he says, satirin bil mafrood. It has to be covering the obligatory part of the foot. It has to cover the obligatory part of the foot, why? Why does it have to cover the obligatory part of the foot? The, what I mean by obligatory part of the foot is the part which is washed obligatory in the wudu. Why does it have to cover? Because... Exactly, it, this is a condition for it to cover. But why? Because they say Al-Hukm uh, Al-Badal Lahu Hukm Al-Mubdal Al-Badal Lahu Hukm Al-Mubdal that the replacement has the same ruling as that which is replacing. Meaning that it has to cover, in terms of purification, that part which is obligatory on the limb to be washed. Okay, so that part which is obligatory to be washed has to be wiped, okay, or covered wherein the wiping will take place. Some of the ulama, they mentioned that there's a fifth condition, not mentioned by our author. Some of them they mentioned, sorry, before going on to the fifth, the fourth one was that the sock should stay up by itself. Because if the sock doesn't stay up by itself, it's too loose, it falls down, then it's not considered in definition as being a sock. Okay? It's of no benefit. If the sock is falling off your feet all of the time, every time you move, it's of no benefit. So it doesn't fall under the category of what you are allowed to wipe. طيب. Some of the ulama, they mentioned a fifth condition which the author hasn't mentioned, which is that you should be able to walk in them. Why? 
they said that when these verses were revealed, وَأَرْجُلِكُمْ Because one of the ways that the verse is narrated is instead of أَرْجُلَكُمْ وَالْفَتْحَ which means that it's washing, أَرْجُلِكُمْ with the kasra, which means that it goes back to the wiping of the head, which means that you can wipe on the feet. So the ulama, they say that the revelation of this verse, okay, وَأَرْجُلِكُمْ was in the time when the Sahaba, the norm of their behavior was that they would walk in their socks. So the socks also have to be from that which you can walk in. Okay? This is the fifth condition that the ulama mentioned. He then says the author, مِنْ خُفٍ وَجَوْرَبٍ صَفِيقٍ وَنَحْوِهِمَا From the khuf, and we said that the khuf is that which is made from skin, okay? Normally made from leather, that which is made from skin, right? Or the jawrab. The jawrab is considered what we know as, as um, socks. Socks made from cotton, etc., okay? But it has to be safiq. The imam mentioned safiq, which means that it's thick enough to the extent that it doesn't show your skin. It's thick enough to the extent that it doesn't show your skin. Why is that? Why does it have to be thick enough, the material, to the extent that it doesn't show your skin? You were going to say something? Tayyip. It has to be thick enough. Why? Because if your skin can be seen, it means it's not covered, right? And that which is not covered has to be washed. And washing and wiping is not combined in one limb. The washing and the wiping cannot be combined in one limb. It has to be covered. For you to be able to wipe over your foot, the foot has to be covered. But if it can be seen, it means de by definition it's not covered. And therefore it has to be washed. This is what they say pertaining to this issue. And Imam Ibn Mundhir in al awsat he mentioned that there were nine companions who used to wipe on their socks, meaning not the, uh, not the khuf, the khufain made from skin, they also used to wipe on their jawrab as long as it was thick enough, thick enough to cover the, uh, the skin and to benefit from protection of cold, etc. And the Imam he says, وَعَلَىٰ إِمَامَةٍ لِرَجُلٍ مُحَنَّكَةٍ أَوْ ذَاتِ ذُؤَابًا And also wiping can be done upon the turban for a man, which is muhannak. Muhannak is that it's wrapped around and underneath the chin. It's wrapped around the head and underneath the chin, right? So this is the first of the conditions for the wiping of the turban. The second of them, sorry. The first is that it's for men only. The second, that has to be muhannak, under the chin. And the third of them, thatu du'aba. Thatu du'aba is that it has to have a tail dangling down from the back. Okay? Firstly, the hadith in Bukhari of Amr ibn Umayyah, where he said, رَأَيْتُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَمْسَحُوا عَلَى الْإِمَامَةِ I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم wiping over his imama, over his turban. So this is where the legislation comes from, that you can wipe over the turban. And the hadith is in Bukhari. And the ruling I said is for men. Why? Because in the time when this revelation was being revealed, the women, it was not from their custom that they would wear turbans. Right? It was not from the custom that they wore turbans. It was only for men. And the Prophet ﷺ in Bukhari, he said, or it's narrated, about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi That the Prophet Sallallahu cursed those men who would try to resemble women and cursed those women that would try to resemble men meaning in their dress and in their behavior We have a lot of that taking place in today's societies, right? So it has to be for men and it has to be muhannaka and it has to be dhatu du'aba. Dhatu du'aba, as we said, the tail. And again, this is what was found in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu And also the ulama they mentioned, as for example, Ahmed Khalil, Sheikh Ahmed Khalil in his explanation, page 112, he said that the Sahaba, radiyallahu anhum, they used to dislike the turbans which were not wrapped around their heads because in jihad, they would fall off. So this is something that was well established in their tradition, in their time that the turban either had that to du'aba, a tail, or it'd be the one that was wrapped. Other ulama, they said, no, any type of turban is allowed, okay? Because now even in, uh, you find, for example, in Egypt and other countries like Lebanon, that you have the turban, which is not muhannak, it's not wrapped, nor does it have the tail, which is hanging down. Before they used to say that this was specifically the dress of the non-Muslims, because the Christians used to wear this type of turban. But over the centuries, it's now become common for the Muslims to wear that type of turban. And they say that if there's mushaqqa, if there's difficulty in removing it, 
then the same ruling applies here that you can wipe over it okay because now it's become normative type of dress that the Muslims wear and also if there's some mashaqqa some difficulty in terms of removing it then you can wipe over it also but out the madhab and the ulama of the madhab they say no they say only the one which is muhannak and the one which has that dua but the one which has a tail the imam he says nisa, and also the khimar of the women mudaratin tahta huluqihinna which is tied under their chins also the khimar can be wiped upon okay as well as the turban and as well as the socks that we have mentioned we have imam ibn mundir and imam ibn abi shayba in his musannaf they collect that the, that the author of Um Salama, Um Salama radiallahu anha, is narrated that she used to wipe upon her khimar. That she used to wipe upon the khimar. So this is, you know, one of the foremost uh, companions and the wife of the Prophet sallallahu that she used to wipe upon the khimar. So they say if it's tied under the, the throat or it's connected in some way and it's difficult to remove, then it's also permissible to, to wipe over the khimar. The Imam he says, Fi hadithin asghar. In the situation, you can wipe on these things if your hadith is asghar. If your hadith is that which requires wudu. But if your hadith is that which requires janaba, which requires you to make ghusl, then you have to remove your socks. Why? Going back to the hadith of Safwan ibn Ahsad, where he said the Prophet used to command us not to remove, remove our socks if we were traveling for three days and three nights, okay, except from the state of Janaba. So in that hadith that we mentioned before, that is the proof that when it's in a state of Janaba, then you have to remove your socks, right? Because you have to take a ghusl and you have to uh, perform the full ghusl if you are in a state of Janaba. The Imam now, he mentions what is added to the sock and the turban and the khimar, right? He adds something else, but this has as well as being allowed to wipe on it, it has a different set of rulings. The Imam, he says, lam qadr al -haja. And also the cast or the bandage or the plaster which a person requires to wear due to injury, then the person is allowed to wipe upon this also, as long as it doesn't go beyond the need. So if you have an injury, la samahallah, may Allah not permit, whereby you need four fingers worth of cast or plaster or bandage, and the doctor gives you eight fingers worth right the extra four has to be removed when you are making wudu if you are able to do so so what is the part that you will wipe upon you will wipe upon the part which actually covers the injury which is the four fingers and the extra four fingers which is there to keep the cast in place or the bandage etc if you can remove it then that has to be removed if you cannot remove it then when you've made wudu and you wiped upon the part which is the original need the extra part you will make tayammum for at the end of the wudu. Okay? The extra part you will make tayammum for at the end of the wudu. The ulama they have a rule they say that a durura tuqaddaru biqadriha bila ziyada wala nuqsan. That that which is a necessity, meaning that for you to wear the bandage or the cast, it's given allowance according to its need. Okay? So that which is its need is to cover where the injury is. The extra part, if it can be removed, it should be removed. If it can't be removed, then like we said, you wipe upon the original part and the extra part, you make tayammum for it at the end of the wudu. The Imam, he says, akbar," Meaning that you can wipe on the cast, the bandage or the plaster which is there due to a need, even in a state of hadith al-akbar. So what's the difference between this and the wiping of the socks? We said that in the state of Had al-Akbar, you have to take your socks off if you're in a state of Janab, etc., right? But in the state of Had al-Akbar and you have a cast or a plaster or a bandage, you don't have to remove that, obviously, right? Because it's there due to a need. So this is one of the differences. And another difference that Imam mentions, he says, إِلَى حَلِّهَا Until your injury, until you until you have recovered from your injury. So, the wiping of the socks, the wiping of the turban, and the wiping of the khimar for the women is regulated by time. 24 hours for the resident and 72 hours for the traveler. But not this bandage situation or the car situation or the plaster. You can keep it on and you don't have to remove it as long as you require it, even if that's for a month. Okay? 
as long as you require it. The Imam, he says, إِذَا لَبِسَ ذَلِكَ بَعْدَ كَمَالِ طَهَارًا If that is worn after having completed purification, meaning after having completed your wudu. What is, it, what is that referred to? If that is worn. It refers to all of these wipings, the four wipings, right? The wiping of the sock, the wiping of the turban, the wiping of the khimar, and the wiping of the bandages, and that which is similar to it. He said, you can wipe on these things if they are worn after, after what? After the complete wudu has been made, the complete tahara. Why? Because if you go back to the hadith of Mughira that we mentioned before, he said that when the Prophet was making wudu, I went to move his socks. And the Prophet said, Da'huma, leave them alone. فَإِنِّي أَدْخَلْتُهُمَا طَاهِرَتَيْنِ For verily I have put them on whilst being in a state of purity. Meaning that Prophet completed his wudu and then put the socks on. So the ulama, they say, if when you are making wudu and you want to wipe on your socks, if you made wudu and you put on one sock, right? If you made wudu and you put on one sock and then you wiped over that sock, and then you made, uh, then you washed the second foot, and then you wiped over that sock after putting the sock on. They say your wudu is not valid. Why? Because the condition is that you have to have complete purification first, which is the completion of the wudu, and then you might, then you can put your socks on and wipe them, right? So you cannot do one foot and then wash the other foot and wipe on the other foot. No, it cannot be like that. It has to be complete wudu. Then you put your socks on. Okay? Then you put your socks on. Also, with regards to the bandages, um, the ulama, some of them in the Hanbali Madhab, like Ibn Taymiyyah, etc., and even Ibn Qudama, and an opinion narrated uh, or um, an opinion attributed to Imam Ahmed, it says that with regards to the bandage, it's not conditional that it has to be put on in a state of purification. Why? So our author is giving the official opinion of the mother, which is that, that all these four wipings have to be after you have complete purif purification. But these Ibn Qudam, Ibn Taymiyyah, and one of the narrations from Imam Ahmed say that it's not conditional that you put the bandage on or the cast on after being in a state of purity. Why? Exactly, you can't control the state and the situation that you're in, in that emergency state whereby you have to put on the bandage or the cast. You may not have time to make tahara. It's not natural for you to say, okay, don't put on the bandage, let me, let me make wudu first, and then put on the bandage or the cast. That's not a natural situation. You can't control that situation. And as the rule says, al mashaqqa tajlibu taysir. That difficulty brings about ease. Okay, so in a state of difficulty, the rulings are lifted due to bringing about ease. So the Imam, he says, مَنْ مَسَحَ فِي سَفْرٍ ثُمَّ أَقَامٍ If you are traveling and you have your socks on that you want to wipe, if you are traveling and then you become a resident, or acts, or the opposite of that, if you are a resident and then you travel, or شَكَّ فِي ابْتِدَائِهِ Or you have a doubt, and when did I wipe? Did I wipe whilst I was a resident? Or did I wipe whilst I was a traveler? فَمَسَحَ then these situations you wipe as though you were a resident. So again, he says, if you wipe whilst traveling and then you become a resident, or you whilst wipe whilst being a resident and then you travel, or you have a doubt as to when did you start the wipe, in all of these situations, then you wipe as though you were a resident. Why? They say, إِذَا اجتمعت الحضر والصفر نغلب الحضر احتياطاً they said, if you have a situation whereby in that act of worship, the, the wiping of the socks, you have part of it was done whilst resident and part of it was done whilst the traveler, then we give the ruling to that which is residence. Why? Because ihtiyatan, out of carefulness. Because you have that which is permitting you to wipe and the, you have that which is preventing you from wiping. Permitting you to wipe more than 24 hours is that you are a traveler. And preventing you from wiping is that you are a resident. So the prevention takes precedence in this ruling, out of care. This is generally what the ulama are saying. So in, again, in the situation, if you wiped while you were a resident, then you traveled, you continue wiping as a resident 24 hours. That's all your limit is. 
or if you worked while you were a traveler, then you became a resident, you only worked 24 hours. What does that mean? Say for example, you were a traveler and you traveled for a day, a whole day, right? 12 hours. And then you got home to your residency. How much time now left do you have to what? Only 12 hours, even though as a traveler you had 72 hours, right? Because now you've got back to your residency, so you have to only wipe for uh, 12 hours. Whereas if you were traveling for two days, and then you get back to your residency, how long can you wipe for? Zero, nothing, that's it. Your tahara is finished now, according to this opinion, right? Your tahara is finished. That's why some of the ulama, they give the example like Sheikh Mutlaq al-Jasir, Sheikh Mutlaq Jasir, he said, say for example, you're on a boat, you're on a boat, traveling, and you're praying on the boat, and you've been traveling for more than 24 hours. As soon as that boat docks, even though you're in the state of prayer, your prayer will be invalid. Because as soon as the boat docks, what are you taking now? You're taking now the ruling of the resident, which is only 24 hours. But you've been traveling for more than 24 hours, meaning you've wiped for more than 24 hours. So as soon as the boat docks, you take the ruling of the resident, which means your wudu is val invalid, therefore your salah is invalid according to this opinion. طيب. وَإِنْ أَحْدَثَ ثُمَّ سَافَرْ قَبْلَ مَسْحِهِ فَمَسْحَ مُسَافِرْ If the person has hadith, right, and then he travels, and this is before wiping, so the hadith takes place while he's a resident and he didn't wipe, then he goes on a journey, he leaves his town, the boundaries of his town, okay, within the same few hours, and then he wipes, now he's a traveler and the ruling for him is 72 hours. He gets the ruling for that of being a traveler. And this, for the ulama of the madhab, is a bit of a complication for them. Why? Because they said first and foremost, because their opinion was, if you remember that the timing starts from, when? It starts from hadith. But now in this situation, they're saying the timing starts from wiping. They were compelled to say this because in this particular situation, there is ijma' on this issue. There is consensus of all of the ulama on this issue. That if the person has hadith, and he didn't wipe, and then he starts traveling, becomes a traveler, and then wipes as a traveler, now in this situation, he gets the concession of wiping as a traveler. So this goes against what the ulama of the madhab were saying before, that the wiping, uh, that the hadith is from when the timing starts, right? Your timing is dictated by the hadith, but in this situation, the timing is dictated by the wiping. And this is because there is ijma'ah, so they had to, they were compelled to say this. وَلَا يَمْسَحُ قَلَانِسِ and you are not allowed to wipe on the qalanis. Qalanis is the plural, plural of uh, qal, qalansuwa. Qalansuwa is a type of headdress which mentioned by Sheikh uh, Mutlaq Jasr in video 6. He says that this is a type of headdress which is connected to the thawb. Like you find in Al Maghrib, like in the Moroccan lands, they have that. Uh, huh? Is that what they call it? Hoodies? Yeah. The, yeah, we're connected to them, right? Yeah, like a hoodie. So they said this is what it's referring to. And other ulama, they say it's any type of headdress which is worn, right? So they, the ulama of the madhab, they say you cannot wipe upon this. You cannot wipe upon this type of headdress because it's uh, number one, it didn't come under the textual evidences. The textual evidences are pertaining to the khimar and pertaining to the turbans as we describe them. That which is found in the time of the Prophet. Number two, they said there's no mashaqqa here, there's no difficulty in taking this type of headdress off. But some of the ulama, such as Ibn, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Taymin from the madhab, they say if there is a difficulty, like for example some women, they're in a situation like in weddings, they have a type of headdress which not only has the hijab but it has a lot of jewelry on it. So it's going to be difficult for them to take that jewelry off. In that situation, they can wipe over the headdress that they are wearing. Okay? So if it's a headdress which is difficult for you to remove, then according to Ibn Taymiyyah and Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala, you can wipe over it due to the mushaqqa, due to the difficult nature. But the author and the ulama of the madhab, they said no. Okay, you can only wipe on the turban and upon the khimar. Tayyib? The imam, he says, neither can you wipe upon <coughs> lafafa. Lafafa are like bandages which are wrapped around the feet. They say neither can you wipe upon this because this wasn't found uh, amongst uh, when the verses were being revealed. It's not known that the companions عنهم, would be wearing this according to this opinion. 
nor can you wipe upon that, and we mentioned this before earlier, that you cannot wipe upon that which drops off from the foot. Okay, if it needs to be tied up and it doesn't stay up by itself, then it's not considered to be a sock. Or you can see some of the skin from underneath it, right? Why did I say this? What was the reasoning I gave? That if you can see part of the skin from the sock, why, can, why cannot you wipe upon that? Yeah, it does. Good. Exactly, exactly. So if you, what you see from the skin necessitates, necessitates washing. And that which is covered necessitates wiping. And the two cannot be joined in the one limb, the washing and the wiping. Therefore, they say, one of his con the conditions is that it has to be fully covered, right? So the Imam, he says in the last few sentences, وَإِن لَبِسَ خُفًّا عَلَى خُفٍ قَبْلِ الْحَدِثِ If a person has put on his socks after making wudu, and now in a state of wudu, he hasn't broken his wudu. He puts on another pair of socks. What is the ruling here? The ruling here, فَالْحُكَّمْ لِلْفَوْقَانِ Then the ruling is given to the upper sock. The ruling is given to the upper sock, right? Though it's permissible if you wanted to, take off the upper sock and wipe the lower sock, right? Again, the person, uh, he made wudu, he put on a pair of socks. Went outside for a little while, found that it was extremely cold, put on another pair of socks. Hasn't broken wudu. In this situation, the ruling, the wiping is given to the upper sock, okay? Though it's permissible for him to take off the upper sock and wipe upon the lower sock if he wanted to do so. وَيَمْسَحُوا أَكْثَرُ الْإِمَامَةِ And he must wipe, must, obligatory upon him to wipe the majority of the turban, except the sides. Okay, the majority of the turban, he has to wipe it, but not all of it. So the rukhsa is that he doesn't have to wipe all of it. He has to wipe the majority of it. What if, part, what if the turban moves and part of his head is shown? The nasiyah, for example. The turban moves back and this much of the head is shown. What does he do here? He wipes that also, okay? So whatever is shown from the head, he wipes that also with the, uh, with the turban. But it doesn't, it's not like the sock. We said the sock, if the sock uncovers part of the foot, then you can't do the wiping, right? But the turban is not like that. The turban is the majority of the turban has to be wiped, not all of it. And also if it moves and uncovers part of the head, then that doesn't affect the validity of the wiping of the turban. And the Imam says, وَظَاهِرِ قَدِمِ الْخُفْ with regards to the khuf, you have to wipe the top of the khuf. Min asabi'ihi ila saqihi. From the toes until the shin. Okay? Duna asfalihi wa aqibihi. Excluding the bottom of the, uh, the sock and the back of the, uh, the heel. You don't have to wipe the heel. All you have to do is wipe the top. Because Ali radiallahu anhu is collected by Imam Ahmad. And Abu Dawood, he said, لو كان الدين برعي Had this religion been based upon the intellect alone, لكان, الـ, لكان أسفل الخف أولى بالمس أولى بالمسح من أعلاه It would have been that the bottom of the foot is more deserving of being wiped than the top of it. ولقد رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يمسح على ظاهري and verily I saw the Prophet ﷺ wiping upon the top of his sock. So he's saying, radiallahu anhu, that you only have to wipe the top of your sock. How did I say you have to wipe it? From the toes up until the shin, right? What if you do the opposite? It's okay, but it's preferable to follow the sunnah to do the other way. Exactly. This is what Imam Ahmed said. He said, however you do the wiping, then it suffices as long as the top of the sock is fully wiped. But however you do it, it's permissible, but the best way is to follow the sunnah. And if you've worn these socks and now you're in a state of hadith, now whilst being in a state of hadith, part of the sock uh, or part of your foot is uncovered, then your wudu becomes invalid in that situation. Okay? So say for example, you're wearing your sock and it ripped. Okay, and it shows this much of your foot. At that moment, your wudu now becomes invalid, going back to what we were saying, that wiping and washing is not combined in one limb, right? Because now, part of it being exposed means that it hasn't fulfilled the condition of the wiping. So in this situation, it becomes invalid, right? Or 
the duration for the wiping has completed. Now your wudu at that moment after 24 hours or 72 hours is broken. It's considered broken. Istanafa at tahara. Then the person has to redo his tahara. Okay.